Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 4, Section 8 in McDougall Hotel's 8th grade textbook entitled Scientific Notation. Now, we've studied scientific notation several times last year, and we did it a little bit this year when we've done I-step review. So none of this should be absolutely new to you. All right, we've done bits and pieces of all of this. There's one new concept, but even that's not going to be a big deal. Start with the definition of scientific notation. A way to write very small or very large numbers written as a number greater than 1 but less than 10 times 10 to the n, where n represents some integer. A way to write very large or very small numbers written as a number greater than 1 but less than 10 times 10 to the n, where n represents some integer. And remember, when we say integer, that just simply means a number, a counting number, not a decimal, not a fraction, just a plain old number. That's all an integer is. Now, there's three things you're going to be expected to do today. Today, you're going to have to be able to write numbers in scientific notation, which you've done before. You're going to be expected to be able to convert them back into standard form, which is also something you've done before. And you're expected to be able to multiply in scientific notation, which is not something you've done before. All right, so let's start with the first column there where you're writing in scientific notation. Now you can see I've done the first problem for you and I've actually solved that problem out for you with some directions. So you want to make sure you get all that copied down. That might want to be something you're writing on the top of your homework tonight because I'm fearful that you will confuse the directions if you don't do that. As you can see, the problem I've done for you is .000034. Four zeros and then three fours. And you're expected to take that into scientific notation. All right, now the first part of scientific notation is you have to place the decimal after the first number that's not a zero. Take and move the decimal so it's after the first number that's not a zero, which is why I changed it into 3.4. 3 is the first number that's not zero, obviously, so I put the decimal right after. Then you've got to count the number of times that means you would have had to move the decimal. If the decimal starts out here and moves so it's after the 3, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 moves to the right, which is also going to be part of the answer. Now, scientific notation is always written with that decimal thing, so the 3.4. Then it's always times 10. Why is it 10? Because our number system is a base 10 system, which means that our number system revolves around the number 10. Okay. Why 10? Well, 10's place is the first one. That would be the number 10. Hundreds place would be 10 times 10. Thousands place would be 10 times 10 times 10. That's why it's 10. All revolves around the number 10. Now, to figure out the exponent, we use that 5 because we said that's the number of times we move the decimal. Now, how do you differentiate which way you move the decimal? Easy. Right? If you have to move the decimal to the right, which we did here, move to the right, you're going to have a negative exponent. If you have to move the decimal to the left, it means you move the decimal that way, you would have a positive exponent, which is why it's negative 5 in the solution. So the answer is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 5th. Again, there's a lot of little things you've got to remember here. All right? It's not really that hard, but if you don't remember little things, you're going to get a whole lot of problems wrong. So I would suggest to you when you start your homework tonight, write these directions at the top, and these should definitely go in your review guide for next week. All right, so let's do some of these problems. I'm going to go through and do step by step, meaning I'm going to go through and do step one with you on everything. Then we'll go through and do step two for everything. Then we'll go through and do step three on everything. All right. So, again, step one. Step one, you want to move the decimal so it's after the first 
number that's not a zero. So for instance, in this problem, 12.346, put it after the first number that's not a zero, that means I'm going to have to place it right after the one. So 1.2346. And we'll come back and do the rest in a minute, but we're going to go through and do that on everything first. So take a look at example two, 7,300,000. What number do I have to put the decimal after? Kaylee? Three. No. After. What number does it go after? The seven, right. It goes after the first number that's not zero. Seven is the first number that's not a zero. It goes right there. Now, so you say, well, do I have to write 7.3 and then all the zeros? The zeros are after decimal now. So you don't have to write them. You can get away with just writing 7.3. Okay, this one up here. Point zero 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 five two six. A decimal, five zeros, five two six. What number does the decimal go after? Lane. Goes after the five, right. 